The first step into space was planned by the scientists conducting the International Geophysical Year. To carry out space studies, the scientific community called for an unmanned satellite in an orbit above the Earth during the IGY, an 18-month period of intense solar activity from July the 1st, 1957 to December 31st, 1958. To this call, two nations responded. One was Russia. The other nation to launch an Earth satellite program for the IGY was the United States. The American satellite program was made the responsibility of the Naval Research Laboratory. Named to direct Project Vanguard was a man with wide experience in radio astronomy, Dr. John P. Hagen of NRL. NRL and the Martin Company had worked together on Viking, a single-stage research rocket which had set important records for altitude and velocity. He must get the job done and must get it done during the IGY. This was the goal set by NRL in the contract, an elliptical orbit with a minimum perigee of 200 miles, the point where the satellite is closest to the Earth, where the friction from the atmosphere is greatest. To ensure this high perigee, the satellite should be injected into orbit at an altitude of 300 miles at a velocity of 25,000 feet per second. Jack, we have to put a satellite up in time to help the IGY people. How many pounds of thrust did we have on Viking? 21,000 pounds. And on Vanguard? 27,000 pounds for the first stage engine. Well, that's not much for this mission, Don. Enough. On this project, we are to make use of the best engine available, as of now. Learn to get the maximum energy out of your thrust, no matter what it is. There's two and a half years to do the job. Now, here's what we're going to do. With Viking, we had one of the highest mass ratios ever produced. That rocket was 80% fuel. With Vanguard, we're going for an even higher mass ratio. If it carries a higher percentage of fuel than Viking, we'll be designing a fuel truck. Less than 4% of the total weight was structure, an even better mass ratio than Viking. By using magnesium alloy where possible instead of aluminum alloy, we saved 39 pounds in the first stage and 14 in the second. We had a rocket that was light and strong. Seven, there is a difficult five, assignment ahead five, for the first stage engine. Four, this engine three, must lift an 11 ton vehicle off one, the launch pad and propel fire, it some 36 burst, miles upward. Fire, At burnout, the vehicle three, should be traveling plus, at least 5,500 feet per second. Three, plus, to do its four, job, this engine must burn for close to 150 seconds, twice as long as the old V-2 rockets. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, all are. The second stage engine will take over after the vehicle is about 36 miles up. It must produce 7,500 pounds of thrust and burn for approximately 120 seconds. It must carry a vanguard to peak altitude and at the same time increase the rocket's velocity to 13,000 feet per second. Third stage. This stage is small compared to the other two, only five feet long, less than one-tenth the length of the overall rocket. The small satellite for the test launches and the larger satellites to be used later both of these are protected from aerodynamic heating by the nose cone. To save still more weight, the nose cone must be discarded as soon as its work is done. Two, one, four. All electronic equipment in the satellite is sub-miniaturized. The radio transmitter weighs only 13 ounces, yet it must send back a signal the tracking stations can follow as the satellite orbits around the Earth. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Vanguard 1, launched in 1958, achieved an initial perigee of 409 miles and an apogee of 2,465 miles. It may stay up for hundreds of years. Plus 
25 seconds. Plus 30 seconds. Plus 35 seconds. Plus 40 seconds. Plus 45 seconds. Plus 50 seconds. Plus 55 seconds. The TV-4 first stage engine burns for 145 seconds. It lifts the vehicle to 41 miles and to a velocity of 5,836 feet per second at burnout. The rocket continues along a curved path. It is now thin air that shielding from air friction is unnecessary. The nose cone is jettisoned. At 172 seconds, as planned in the rocket's program, the nose cone pops off. The satellite's transmitter, exposed to light and air, starts sending its signal back. Altitude, 74 miles. TV-4's second stage delivers its thrust for 122 seconds. At burnout, the rocket is 175 miles up, traveling at 12,675 feet per second. The rocket coasts on to a height of about 300 miles. Inside the second stage, the third stage containing the satellite now begins to play its part. Small rockets start it spinning on a turntable. When the spinning reaches 150 revolutions per minute, the second stage is separated, its job completed. 405 miles up, the third stage is ignited. Stabilized by its spin, the third stage fires and gathers speed. Then it too burns out and ejects the satellite into orbit at 18,000 miles per hour. The speed at which the satellite's movement forward matches its fall toward Earth and thus keeps it in orbit. The satellite is sprung clear. Now comes a period of waiting. Up to this moment, Vanguard is a rocket that has done its job. Instrumentation tells us it has produced the velocity for an orbit. Instrumentation has not told us if it has produced the direction for an orbit. At NRL, the Vanguard Control Center awaits word from the tracking center at San Diego. One hundred and thirty-four minutes. This was the time it took for Vanguard's first trip around the Earth. The satellite's highest speed, 26,080 feet per second. Its apogee, 2,462 miles out in space. Its perigee, 405 miles above the Earth. Its life expectancy, 200 years. The first Vanguard satellite will be orbiting the Earth when the space age it helped foretell becomes reality.